welcome to om learning classes here we are going to discuss what is the effect of phase or frequency error in the synchronous detector means we put a condition at the receiver that the local oscillatory signal must be synchronized corresponding to frequency and phase with respect to transmitter carrier wave if this will not happen if there is small variation of frequency or small variation in the phase then what is the outcome of the receiver so as per the mathematical representation the first we receive the receive signal that is your dspc modulated signal that is your mt into ct that is equal to mt cos omega ct now we take the local generated signal that has frequency error as well as the phase error the frequency error is corresponding to delta omega and the phase error is corresponding to your phi and as per our synchronous or homodyne or cohen detector we multiply both the signal by using product modulator and that is edt and that will gives the outcomes by multiplying both the received signal corresponding to your local oscillator signal then we pass our signal by low pass filter that have their cut off frequency as per our modulating maximum modulating frequency f and we get the result that the mt and the another factor is mt by 2 is there as per our perfectly synchronized uh, local oscillator signal now here we have mt by 2 into cos delta omega t plus phi and delta omega is corresponding to the frequency error and phi is corresponding to your phase error and the slow time varying function that this cos delta omega t plus phi slow time varying function that distort the message here we have special case the first case we consider the local oscillator signal is perfectly synchronized as per our transmitted carrier wave means there is no frequency error there is no phase error its outcomes is our desired signal and it is free from distortion as well as attenuation now we take the second case in which there is phase error the frequency error is zero then the output is mt by 2 into cos phi and the phi is your time independent so there is attenuation is there but no distortion however in general phi is randomly varies with time due to random variation of propagation medium so at that point we considered the phi is time independent so edt is equal to mt by 2 into cos phi and the phi is time independent and that is corresponding to your attenuation and there is no distortion so very very important point here we have that quadrature null effect if the phase error is equal to 90 degree then the detected output is zero and that effect is known as quadrature null effect so i repeat again because it is very important point if phi is 90 degree the received signal edt is equal to 0 and this is known as quadrature null effect now we consider the third case here the phase error is equal to 0 but there is frequency error the edt is equal to mt by 2 cos delta omega t and delta omega is your frequency error the cos delta omega t is time dependent and cause the 
distortion in the detected output and this is more serious distortion and the frequency error should be avoided and here the amplitude fluctuation at a rate of delta omega is known as another term that is known as varna and the receiver can tolerate the frequency error or warble up to 30 hertz. If the frequency is more than 30 hertz, then the distortion is not in the tolerable limit at the receiver. And resultant, we can't recover the message. Now we consider the last case in which there is frequency error as well as phase error and if both are present then we have mt by 2 cos delta omega t plus 5 means the estimate message signal have attenuation as well as distortion at the output of the signal the resultant signal is not our desired message signal there is necessity for recovery of desired signal that the local oscillator signal is synchronized or must be synchronized with respect to transmitted carrier signal in terms of frequency or in terms of phase. Now we take the phasor representation and phasor representation we consider the coordinate system rotate anti-clockwise at an angular frequency omega z. Now as per our modulated signal, the carrier signal frequency is absent in the modulated spectrum. So it is with respect to our horizontal direction and it is fixed and it is represented as dotted line. Another thing, we represent upper side bend that rotate anti-clockwise and we have lower side bend that rotate clockwise and the resultant amplitude of modulated wave at an instant is the vector sum of upper side bend and lower side bend phasor. Rather, the carrier phasor is absent and it does not contribute to amplitude variation and here we have one important thing that both the segment upper segment or lower segment have constant amplitude and their sum shows an amplitude variation because of unequal frequencies of both the side so it is very important as per their phasor representation of dsbc signal and the envelope of DSPC signal crosses the zero axis and at the zero axis it have 180 degree phase shift that is also known as phase reversal phase reversal at zero crossing here we take the first example with respect to single tone signal single tone tone is corresponding to frequency single frequency signal is your message corresponding to message signal and here we take the message signal that is mt is equal to cos 2 by fmt so fmt means one modulating frequency is there so it is known as single tone signal as per the definition of ds basis signal the modulating signal and the carrier signal both are multiplied both are multiplied and we get the modulated spectrum cos 2 pi fmt into cos 2 pi fct and that is equivalent to half that it start cos 2 pi fc minus fmt plus cos 2 pi fc plus fmt and that fc plus fmt is corresponding to upper side bend and fc minus fmt is corresponding to your lower side bend in the modulated spectrum so in modulated spectrum 
we have upper side bend and lower side bend and the carrier signal is absent the carrier signal frequency is absent so in modulated spectrum at fc and minus fc there is dotted line and that will indicate that or modulating signal is centered corresponding to corresponding to carrier frequency but the carrier signal frequency is absent and that is why it is known as suppressed carrier now this modulated signal is transmitted over communication channel and at the receiver we recover our original message signal by using synchronous demodulator or synchronous detector now at the receiver we take local oscillator signal that must be coherent in frequency as well as phase with respect to our transmitted carrier wave so with the multiplication of local oscillator signal and the received signal we have the spectrum that is corresponding to your uh, message signal frequency that is your fm and the another signal we have that is centered at 2 fc means we have two impulse one is plus minus 2 fc plus fm or plus minus 2 fc minus fm so by utilizing low pass filter that have the cutoff frequency equivalent to maximum modulating frequency fm low pass filter easily filter out the signal undesired signal that are centered at plus minus 2 fc and as a result we get the signal that have the frequency with respect to our modulating signal frequency that is your f further we also observed that the bandwidth of modulated spectrum is equivalent to fc plus fm that is your highest frequency the modulated signal minus fc minus fm that is your low lowest frequency in the modulated spectrum and by subtracting both the highest frequency minus lowest frequency in a modulated spectrum is you get the modulated signal bandwidth that is equal to 2 fm so in the single tone we consider the single message frequency now we consider multi-tone signal multi-tone signal means the message signal have multiple signal frequency we consider two things one the fm3 is highest frequency and it is greater than fm2 as well as fm1 corresponding to three tone signal similarly the amplitude of first signal that is your am1 is greater than am2 as well as am3 as similarly am2 is greater than am3 but it is less than am1 so when we consider both the things and by multiplying with respect to carrier signal, we result in modulated spectrum. And in the modulated spectrum, the one point is observed. When there is multi-tone signal, then the modulated signal bandwidth is defined according to twice of maximum modulating frequency present in multi-tone signal so with the help of color coding the amplitude and frequencies are represented and finally we resulted as per our graphical representation thank you very much for your time, and please subscribe this channel for getting regular updates